tickled Teal to have our Lieutenant Governor, Billy Nungasser, on campus with us this morning. Lieutenant Governor, thank you for your great contributions, for being a cultural leader to our state, and for helping to make today's um, lecture possible. We appreciate your dedication to Nunez and particularly to St. Bernard. And he shared to me that he is biased to St. Bernard. And I will uh, reiterate that it's because he got more votes in St. Bernard Parish than he did in Clapham. And so we're going to continue. <laughs> Billy Nungesser is the 54th Lieutenant Governor of the state of Louisiana and was elected in 2015, beginning his term in January of 2016. So he made the transition from being a successful businessman to beginning a political career following Hurricane Katrina. In 2005, Billy Nungesser and his wife Cher rode out Hurricane Katrina at their ranch in Southern Plaquemines Parish. And in response to his own frustration and the frustration of many, so thank you for being that voice, uh, Lieutenant Governor, over slow responses from the government following Katrina, Billy decided to run for Plaquemines Parish president in 2006, was reelected in 2010 with over 70% of the vote. On April 20th, 2010, Plaquemines Parish became ground zero for the nation's biggest environmental disaster. And in the wake of the Deepwater Horizon oil rig explosion in the Gulf, Billy did become a voice, once again, of Louisiana's frustration. During Deepwater Horizon, the New York Times named him the hardest working man in Louisiana. And ABC named him the person of the week during that same period. He continues to be one of the hardest working men in Louisiana on behalf of all of us. So today, uh, Billy is second in command in the executive branch and Louisiana's ambassador as commission of the Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. From natural disasters to promoting our great state, Billy Nungesser is a man for all of Louisiana. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me give a big hand welcome to Billy Nungesser. Good morning. I tell you, it's kind of special to be here in St. Bernard, especially since I have a lot of good friends who surprised me this morning. Um, first off, Irene Buris is here, and Irene worked in my first campaign, which a lot of people don't remember. I ran for state represent when I, representative when I was 21 in Algiers, where I was born. Not a very smart thing to do, but out of 11 candidates, we missed the runoff by 100 votes back then. Uh, there were more Democrats than anything, and they didn't vote for Republicans, and I didn't realize that getting in the race. But, uh, and I swore I would never run again after that race. But Irene, it's great to see you. And something you don't see very often in politics today, uh, I ran against, for parish president, against three great council members in the parish, and um, was successful, and uh, ended up uh, working very closely with my uh, director of administration, one of my opponents, Janice Acosta, who was here this morning. And I credit her with a lot of my success as parish president because they told me I couldn't win parish president. Uh, number one, I was Republican. Number two, I wasn't born in Plaquemines Parish. And uh, the old times will tell you, you've got to be there for at least three generations. And, and, and when I walked door to door, I found out that was pretty true because people say, I think you're a good guy, but I can't vote for you because you wasn't born here. So, um, but Janice came to work with me and helped me learn quickly what was important to the people of Plaquemines Parish, and we made a great team. So Janice, thank you for being here today. And I'm where I am today because of those two ladies believing in me at an early age and an early time in my career. So thank you very much. Today, uh, I'm here to welcome you. I'm not here to give you any of the facts. Uh, I got a lot of myths I could give you, but uh, uh, just the other morning when we were here for the breakfast with St. Bernard, I learned more from the history professor in that lecture than I learned all through school about the uh, Battle of New Orleans. Now, maybe I wasn't paying attention, or maybe I didn't have the right teacher, but uh, my mother probably would have said I didn't pay attention. But um, I'm really excited because to, to learn all of those stories that we thought were true, that were really missed, which I learned just the other morning, and the true history and the dedication and, um, and all those great things that took place uh, in St. Bernard of New Orleans. But I will share with you one thing. 
uh, as you know, as Lieutenant Governor, I'm over the museum system. And we finally got the Cabildo, uh, after a year and a half in office, to stop leaking. And we finally got it cleaned up on the inside, repainted on the outside. And when the 300 year anniversary of New Orleans, we had our first exhibit in over 30 years. We had the uh, exhibit from Spain, and the King of Queen of Spain came down and visited that exhibit. And now our second exhibit is about the life of Miss Montalvo. And if you know anything about her life, uh, at age two, she inherited half a million dollars. Uh, her father died, uh, got in a fight with her father-in-law over money, go figure, and was shot four times in the breast by her father-in-law. She lived, went on to build those beautiful apartments in New Orleans, rebuilt the uh, cathedral, was responsible for the Cabildo and the Presbyter. And the one story, and it may be a myth, but I hear it and they say it's true, she had a crush on Andrew Jackson. And her apartment was in the middle of the square on the, on the second floor. And she wanted to sip coffee every morning and look out at Andrew Jackson. So she made sure that statue, if you ever wanted why it's sideways, he's rearing up on his horse, tilting his hat, looking at her apartment. Because she wanted to make sure that every morning when she sipped her coffee, that uh, he would be looking out at her. And uh, I could sure use a political stroke today in Louisiana. <laughs> But uh, I'm really excited to be here today and to support this great college and this parish that uh, works so hard to make sure we never forget the history and the myths and the stories behind the Battle of New Orleans. So thank you all for being here today. I'm honored to be here and enjoy the day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lieutenant Governor Nungesser. And I will tell you, as a history professor, that all you have to do is say anything with great confidence, and it becomes history. And no matter what it is, because nobody ever knows the difference. All right. And so, but I do want to um, give my great appreciation to the Lieutenant Governor for the assistance in helping with all this, and also to tell a story which has two parts. One to show that my respect for him as a government leader, and I, I think if I didn't know this, and also to give tribute to one of the greatest friends of the symposium in the 20 years and my greatest friend, Christina Bella, who was key to the symposium for all these insiders all the, all the time and she passed away since the last one. And so this was, I met uh, Ms. Mungesser in, it was in 2016 at the Louisiana Writers Award and where, at Louisiana Book Festival where Christina Bella was getting the Louisiana Writers Award, which accurately showed that she was really the most important historian and one of the most important writers, not just in St. Bernard Parish history or New Orleans, but in the state and really even the nation. And of course, she is the one who did all the groundbreaking work on the Barrister State Pantalva and those things. And so um, there, uh, Ms. Nungesser gave the introduction. So I was also helping her with that. And so I was able to meet him briefly. I told him a little bit about the symposium and gave some information. I'm sure that was it but he had indicated that he wanted to help, and thus, at this symposium, unexpectedly to me on his own, he did help, so I appreciated that. But also what I appreciated more is that uh, Christina respected you, I guess her very, very highly, and had the greatest love for you and your contributions to the culture of the state, and Christina was not one, she was one to speak her mind, and she was not one to hold back when she didn't feel that love. All right, and I, it's the, my greatest story of her and my greatest historical story, as I say it, and I'm, I'm not sure if you remember it, but just with the greatest, only she could do this, but um, she was thanking Lieutenant Governor for his introduction, and with the greatest love and respect, she, out in public in this big, big event, she called him a coon ass. <laughs> I remember. And, and I think that's probably the greatest introduction you ever got. So that's I was, right. I was I was impressed to be a part of that, and but she definitely, you know, and I want to just say how much I, I miss Christina, and I know a lot of the people here do too. So thank you very much for that as well. Thank you. Right. And the, and most of the lunch, the good seafood of the lunch, was provided by Lieutenant Governor. So you can thank him again when we. Get it. So.